I welcome all of you to the class. As far as the today's class is concerned, in today's class, we will talk about one more method for solving the system of linear equations. And in today's class, we will talk about a method known as the Gauss. The method we will be talking today is known as Gauss serial method. In the previous class, we were talking about the Jacobs method or the Jacobi method for solving system of nonlinear equations. And today we'll be talking about the Gauss serial method. Both the methods are quite uh, similar to each other, except few differences between the two methods. As far as the Gauss serial method is concerned, uh, let me take up a problem. Uh, the question is like 10 X1 plus X2 plus two times x3 is equal 44 and two times x1 plus 10 times x2 plus x3 is equal 51. And the third equation is x1 plus two times x2 plus 10 times x3 is equal to 61. Okay, so we have a system of linear equations, three equations we have, and we have three variables, x1, x2, and x3. So we have to solve this equation. Uh, we have to find the value of x1, x2, and x3. So how we go, first of all, from equation, let me call this as equation one, let me say this is equation two and let's call this as equation three, okay? So from equation one, first of all, we'll obtain the value of x1. x1 will be equal to one by 10. Then it will be 44 minus x2 minus two times x3, okay? And from next equation, we'll obtain the value of x2. x2 is again equal one by 10, 51 minus two times x1 minus x3. And from this equation, third equation, we'll obtain the value of x3 that will be equal to one by 10, one by 10 of 61 minus x1 minus two times x2, okay? So we have now three equations. We have x1, x2, and x3, okay? We'll make use of these three equations for solving the for solving the system of equations. In the previous, in the Jacobi's method, we were assuming that x1 is equal to x2 is equal to x3 is equal to something, okay? Then we are starting the process of iterations from those assumptions. But now we are, what we'll be doing, in order to find the value of x1 in this equation, we'll be assuming the value of x2 and x3. That is how we will go. We'll start our iteration. So first of all, we'll begin our iterations. So let me write here, iteration one. As far as the iteration one is concerned, what do we do in iteration one? We'll take up the equation, let me call this as equation four. This is equation five and this is equation six, fine. So I will take equation four, okay? And I will find the value of X1 while I assume the value of X2 and X3, okay? So in equation, in equation, four, okay, we assume let x2 be equal to x3. This is how we have to do. We have to assume x2 is equal to x3. Let it be some variable. Let it be some constant. Let's suppose zero. You can take it one, you can take it two. This is your choice, okay? So <clears throat> as we put the value of x2 equal to zero, x3 equal to zero, therefore the value of x1 will be equal to 44 by 10, that is 4.4, .4, okay? Now with this value of 4.4, .4, Okay, this value of x1 equal to 4.4, we will substitute in equation five. Okay, we'll substitute x1 is equal to 4.5 while x3 is still equal zero to find the value of x2. Okay, that is x1 we have found this is 4.4. Okay, now uh, what we will be doing, this is we have assumed x2 is equal to zero, x3 is equal to zero and we have x1 equal to 4.4. Fine. Now, uh, with this value uh, of x1 and x3, 
okay we'll find the value of x2 okay that is what i mean to say is what we will be doing is go to the next equation your x1 is 4.4 now your x3 continues to be equal to 0 and from this equation get the value of x2 that is x2 is equal 1 by 10 okay of 51 minus 2 times x1 our x1 is 4.4 that is 2 into 4.4 and our x3 continues to be equal 0 so this is 51 minus 8.8 .8, okay 51 minus 8.8 .8, that is equal 42.2 uh, let me check it 51 minus 8.8 .8. 1 minus 8.8 .8, that is yes 42.2 42.2 divided by 10 therefore x2 comes out equal 4.22 okay now i have this is my value of x2 this is the value of x1 with this value of x1 and this value of x2 go to the equation 3 obtain the value of x3 okay that is x3 becomes equal x3 becomes equal one tenth of 61 minus x1 our x1 is 4.4 minus 2 times x3 that is 8.44 okay so we have now 61 minus 4.4 minus 8.44 that is 48.16 divided by 10 that's equal 4.816 okay so uh, we will, we, what we will do now, we have to, so we will record this entire data, okay? So the data that we will be recording is now about X1, X2, and X3, okay? So let me clear some space here. So, okay, let me clean the entire diagram. So the equations that I had, uh, which I'm trying to solve are x1 is equal to one by 10th of, sorry, one tenth of 44 minus x2 minus two times x3. And my next equation of x2, is equal one tenth of 51 minus two times x1 minus x3 and the third equation is x3 is equal one tenth of 61 minus two times x2 minus x1 okay and the iteration one which has given us the iteration one we have the values of x1 is equal 4.4 x2 is equal uh, 4.22 and our x3 is equal and our x3 is equal 4.816 okay now we will go to iteration two as far as the iteration two is concerned, how do we go ahead in iteration two is simple. In iteration two, again, we take the equation one. Assume this value of x2 and this value of x3, get the value of x1, okay? So x1 is equal one tenth of 44 minus two times x2. Our x2 is 4.22 minus two times x3 minus two into 4.816. Six. Okay, so that comes out equal x1 is equal x1 becomes equal once we solve it. Uh, this becomes uh, 4.0154. Okay, now this value with this value of x1, okay, and this value of x3 will obtain the value of x2. Okay, so in iteration 2, the value of x2 is equal one tenth of one tenth of 51 minus two times x1 our x1 is 4.0154 okay minus x3 our x3 we have already assumed is 4.816 4.816 okay 
So with this value, we can obtain the value of x2 and it comes out equal to, uh, it is equal, let me solve it. It is equal to 3.0148. Okay. Now this is the value of my x2, fine. With this value of x2 and this value of x1, this value of x1 and this value of x2, I will obtain the value of x3. So x3 will be equal to one tenth of 61 minus two times x2 minus x1, okay? So I know the value of x2, it is 3.0148. I know the value of x1, it's 4.0154. So therefore I can obtain the value of x3 and x3 comes out equal, x3 becomes equal 5.0955. This is the value of x3, okay? So in iteration two, we obtained the value of x3, we obtained the value of x2, we obtained the value of x1. Now we will go to iteration three. In iteration three, we will say this is the value of x2, this is the value of x3, obtain the value of x1, okay? With that value of x1 and this value of x3, we will obtain the value of x2. Therefore, with the next value of x2 and already obtained value of x1, we'll obtain the value of x3. We will keep on repeating the steps, okay? The final flowchart that we have to draw will be in this form. So we'll have, on this side, we'll write the iterations. Iterations, we'll write x1, x2. We'll continue the process as I will in nutshell show you what will happen. This is iteration one, two, three, so on, keep on doing the iterations, okay? So we started with the value of x1 was 4.4. The value of our x2 came out equal uh, 4.22. The value of our x3 came out to be equal 4.816. This is what happened in the first iteration, okay? In our iteration two, okay, we got the value of x1 as 4.2. 0.154, the value of x2 came out 3.0148, okay? And the value of x3 in iteration two was 4.816, okay? Uh, 4.0154, this is clean here. The value of x2 was coming out equal to 3.0148, sorry. Three point zero one four eight, and the value of x was five point zero nine double five. Okay, so we continue the iterations. Okay, as we go on doing the iterations, ultimately we'll obtain the value of x one three point zero 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 zero. The value of x two will become equal to four point zero 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 zero, and the value of x three will come out to be equal to five point zero 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 zero. And any iteration after this will not change the value of x1, x2, and x3. Therefore, we conclude that x is equal, x1 is equal to 3, x2 is equal to 4, x3 is equal to 5 is the solution of this system of equations. Okay. So the iterations are to be done in the same way as we, uh, we were just discussing. So this is how the Gauss Seidel method works. So this is how we solve the system of linear equations using the Gauss Seidel method and the previously discussed method known as the Jacobs method or the Jacobi method, okay? So uh, I will be starting the one more important chapter in this class that's called the methods of interpolation. This is something important for us, interpolation techniques, methods of interpolation. What do we understand by the methods of interpolation? That is important for us. Well, as far as the methods of interpolation are concerned, we often have the data, okay? For example, I will talk about, I will take an example of COVID-19. Let me start with COVID-19 problem itself. In COVID-19 cases, for example, we are, this is the month of March or let's start from March, 2020, okay? And we are right now in March, 
2021. Okay. So I will write March 2020. Okay. Or I will write it like this. I will write the month and, and I will write number of active cases or number of positive cases. You clean it. Number of positive cases I should write. Okay. So I will write the month and on this side I will write number of positive cases. Okay. So it's like I will write for the March 2020, April 2020. Okay, May 2020, June, July, let's go up to, let's finally reach to, it goes on, this is Feb 2021 and we have March. 21, we are in March 20. Okay, let's suppose it was detected that in the March 21, the number of active cases were 500. At the end of March 2020, the total number of positive cases were 500. In April, they were say, for example, 510. In May, they had around 700. Then in June, there were around 850 say for example in July there were 1900 cases so we have all the data for all these months available in Feb 2021 we had just 200 positive cases and in March we don't know how many are the positive cases okay now the question is with the data available okay you know how many were the positive cases in March April May June so for all the months from March 2020 to Feb 2021, we know how, we, how, how many were the positive cases. Now the question says, how many were the positive cases in March 2021, okay? How many were the cases in March 2021? Okay, so how many were the positive cases in March 2021? So with all the data available for us, Okay, we have to find the number of cases in March 2021 with this data available, okay? Or maybe we are given the number of cases in March 2021, the number of cases are given, say for example, 700, for example. And with all the data available, say for example, we don't know that we have the data of July 2020 missing. This data is missing, okay? And we are asked with this data available, find the number of positive cases that were in July 2021, okay? So do we have some mathematical technique of finding the values yes we have the technique that's called interpolation that's called interpolation and extrapolation okay so these are the two techniques by which we find the number of positive cases or we find the missing data from the given data okay so we are given some values corresponding to those values we are given other values and now we have to find some missing value. We make use of the techniques that's called interpolation or extrapolation. Now in interpolation techniques, we have you generally use the Lagrangian interpolation or the Newton's divided difference interpolation. Okay. So there are many a techniques. We have Lagrangian interpolation, Newton, Newton's interpolation, uh, Gauss's formula, Stirling's formula, Bessel's formula, uh, Laplace Everett's formula, and many a methods for solving these uh, for solving these interpolation problems which we'll be taking up hopefully from the next class. So let me wind up the class and give you the inkling that from tomorrow we'll be starting the interpolation and extrapolation.